Model 3 is Tesla's most significant car to date, mainly because it's the company's most affordable product. It's all electric, of course, with the potential for industry-leading EV driving range, and it's the company's first four-door design. Your next executive saloon? Middle management, early adopters of new technology should form an orderly queue. Previously, we've reviewed Tesla products as EVs. It's a measure of the importance of this one that we have to judge it by more conventional standards, as you would if you were considering it as an alternative to the BMW 3 Series, the Mercedes C-Class, or the Audi A4 mid-sized executive saloons that it wants to target. So, what will you feel here? Well, superbly accurate steering. Uh, it lacks only the final, really feel some element that's uh, integral to a good European rack a very well modulated set of brakes, quite a lot of tyre and wind roar, and firmish damping which contributes to excellent body control through the turns, uh, but doesn't crash too much through potholes or over speed humps. Uh, you could actually enjoy yourself driving this car, and that's a new experience for us in an EV and for anyone else familiar with this evolving market. The smooth linearity of the throttle helps, although it is still prone to lurch the car forward like a startled rabbit if it's used without due care. If you were to mash it into the bulkhead of this top performance spec variant, you'd reach 60 miles an hour in just 3.2 seconds. Forget M3s and C63s, that is Ferrari fast. This performance derivative is one of the two top dual motor all wheel drive Model 3 variants, the other being the long range version. That name designates that car's industry leading WLTP rated 348 mile driving range. Uh, for the performance model, the figure is 329 miles. You'll manage a little less than that though if you opt for the much more affordable Standard Range Plus Model 3 that the majority of customers are expected to choose. Here, a single motor rear driven setup gives you a 254 mile WLTP rated driving capability between charges. If that mileage needs to be covered over long highway distances you'll appreciate the extent of this car's autonomous driving capability and that is courtesy of its integrated autopilot system which uses eight cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors and the forward facing radar. Uh, the resulting setup will position the car centrally within its lane, maintain a chosen speed, it will regulate the distance to the vehicle in front and it will even perform lane changes automatically. As with any EV, you'll mainly be plugging in and replenishing the car overnight using the garage mounted wall box that you'll need. The Tesla brand though gives you a much wider range of options for public charging when you're out and about thanks to 430 UK supercharger locations which are exclusive to Tesla owners which allow you to charge the battery up to 80% capacity in as little as 30 minutes. Plus there are a further 550 less powerful but still very useful so-called destination chargers in clubs, hotels and other public locations around the country. Thanks to CCS socket compatibility, your Model 3 can also be used at any public charging point too, and you'll make big savings in terms of your tax, VED and maintenance liabilities. It's a mark of Tesla's brand identity that even someone unacquainted with EVs would probably recognise this car's maker. They might perhaps be less likely to recognise it as a Model 3, although on closer inspection the cues are quite distinct, although they're still very much EV orientated. Starting here at the front, where this more affordable Tesla design sees no need for the decorative front grille that aimed to ease the Tesla transition for Model S and Model X customers graduating over from something more conventional. A little overtaking presence has been lost as a result. Uh, from the side, you notice the short bonnet. That's facilitated by the skateboard-style chassis, which locates the drivetrain and batteries as low as possible in the car, enhancing interior space and lowering the centre of gravity. From almost any angle, this car looks more like a hatch than a saloon, including from the rear. It's certainly very Model S-like. As with that car, Tesla has mounted the charging flap uh, neatly into the offside rear light cluster, and this time uh, they've made the socket inside CCS compatible, so a wider number of uh, public charging stations can be used. 
Once inside, you'll find yourself seated in a cabin that's more minimalist than a Scandinavian loft. Well, in terms of button clutter anyway, there's nothing minimalist about this enormous 15-inch central touchscreen onto which virtually all the driving, comfort and infotainment features uh, you'll need have been located. Uh, beyond this, operating control provision has been kept to the absolute minimum, which is all well and good. But a uh, potential premium segment European buyer of this car is ideally going to want all that minimality to be accompanied by the kind of cabin quality and richness of interior design that the posh German brands offer. You don't really get that here, but uh, compensatory technology is absolutely dripping from every menu and pinch and swipe action is accessible through this enormously capable central screen. There's a superb Google Earth navigation system, all the usual infotainment stuff, and even arcade games. Uh, the driving position does sit you a little higher than the segment norm, and the lack of a central transmission tunnel frees up loads of space for extra uh, useful stowage compartments. Right, time to take a look in the back. At first glance here, it all seems good, especially compared to the cramped rear quarters you get in a rival BMW 3 Series or Mercedes C-Class. Uh, take a seat though, and you find that raised floor we mentioned matched with low set seats, the result being that you sit with your knees slightly higher than they would normally be. Uh, once you adjust to that though, you'll find that legroom isn't bad. Um, one six footer can just about sit behind another, thanks in part to these uh, scalloped seat backs here, although the fact that you uh, can't slide your feet under the seat in front is something of a limiting factor. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. The capacity on offer here, 425 litres, is 55 litres less than you get from a BMW 3 Series or Audi A4, but only fractionally less than a Mercedes C-Class. Anyway, it's a good square usable space with a recessed area on the left and a deep well under the cargo base for the charging leads uh, that could also take other small items that you might not want sliding around on the boot floor. We'll finish with a look at the frunk, the fruit, or whatever you want to call it, up front in the nose. Now, it can't quite swallow suitcases like the one in the Model S, but its 117 litre capacity is probably good for a couple of small squashy bags. A lot of people have a lot to say about Tesla and its co-creator Elon Musk. Here though, our job is to talk about the cars it makes, specifically this one, which has caused the brand more headaches than any other in its history. But then perhaps you would expect that. It's one thing to build relatively low volume cars that sell in the 75 to 125,000 man bracket, but it's quite another to make one for the volume market where per unit profits are lower and product scrutiny much greater. The Model 3 is that car, and on initial inspection, we think the signs here are good. You would have to like the cool, pared-back image of the Model 3 to want one, and you'd have to be forgiving of a few idiosyncrasies. But if none of that matters, then you'll find that what's on offer here is just as significant as it is ambitious. You'd expect that from the car that some said Tesla could never build, but it has, and you should try it. Thank <music> you.